Hey everybody, it's been a while. It's been almost nine days, or almost eight days since I posted last. Temperature is mm, 72, 73 degrees. Humidity is only 53%. I'm surprised the place ain't freezing over because let me tell you what, last few days have been great. Uh, we are done with the uh, the oppressive heat that I love to complain about. And we're back to something a little bit more reasonable. Have posted recently because I've been working on this thing. Uh, lots of engineering. Lots of connecting things up. I have no dimensions in this area. Uh, the size of my parts are going to be based on, you know, known dimensions. Which, you know, this main part and where this stuff goes and how it all links up it's looking good so far uh i just sat in there and uh kind of rehearsed what i was going to do and i'm probably going to forget half of it so i'm going to give it my best shot so if you ever happen upon a or an h or a j mod uh pilot's console you want to take it apart i'll do a little bit more detailed and expeditiously than i did it in my previous video so let's get to it that pops off right there Now well, let's do this first. That uh, pops off right there. Give you a little peek in there so you can see what I'm talking about. And these pop off. All right, and then your uh, turbo booster selector comes out. Now what I've done over the past week well, first of all, I had to do some renovations in the house to make things a little bit easier for my elder and mother to get along. So that's occupied a big part of my time. But in terms of this guy right here, I've installed this floor, which he rivets on that line right there. The, uh, the maintenance manual says you, re you remove the side hatches specifically to get to this stuff, which I'm kind of at odds as to how you go about doing that because you could barely see anything so there's definitely going to be some cutouts in that area i know there's going to be one for the drum there's going to be one for the uh the master motor control and of course the tbs but we'll figure that out but what do we got going on here i guess i'll show you uh first of all i got these bearings in these are B112 bearings. The inside diameter, which these are actual parts from the B36, not you know, vintage parts, but these are the exact parts they used. Inside diameter is one and three eighths of an inch. So I knew that the uh, quadrant shafts were one and three eighths, one and three eighths outside diameter. And these are one and five eighths outside diameter. So that means I can make the sheaves based on this, which I assume they probably just slide on here or the sheaves do. I have no information. My pictures are terrible of that area. I've installed these micro switches for the, uh, this is the landing gear one, and this is the, the flap, but they got a little clicky button on them. There's 12 of them. There'll be six in the front. Crap, I don't have my Clico wrench, so I can't take that out. Shouldn't be a problem. All right, so the maintenance manual says that you, the first thing you do is you remove these wheels. I guess I'll show you. So they, they have like a stop on them and this thing will screw out. And then on the inside, there's going to be some taper pins that actually hold these on. So you have to remove it, get down in there from up under here. This, this can't be here. This is too far because you have to get up there and release the 10 30 second taper pins and they come out that way on either side and then you can remove the plug which holds everything together and then these guys pop right out well i can't do this with both hands you're gonna have to excuse me with one hand <laughs> there we go it's just there at the right the yeah. wrong angle so it bound. So this comes out. And after you do that, it indicates, or the manual indicates you, 
you do this from the left-hand side, which is the aircraft commander side. So you pull him out now, and that frees up torque tube A, and I can't see torque tube A, because, so there we go. There's torque tube A, and then you're gonna have your sprockets and everything, they're gonna fall out of there. <laughs> so he comes out there, put him there so he'll fall off. And then torque tube B, which you can see, I've made this, uh, this three-way guy. Here's going to be an, the idler pulley, or the idler sprocket. It's got a bearing, the part number is A-781, something or that identical. Uh, it's simply a, a, a roller bearing that goes and in, screws into here, and then there's a big sprocket on here, and it's just an idler sprocket. That part is made by Chrysler, and I can't find that part anywhere. I, I can't find it mentioned in Google Books and PDFs, eBay, all the aviation part houses. It, it's like a ghost. Um, it's it's a very rare thing that I can't eventually track something down with enough, you know, dedication. But I can't find nothing. Uh, I just have a picture, so I don't even know where to really start but it is an idler wheel. But I like to have some things in here in, because most 98% 90, of stuff is made by Convair. There's only a few things like these that are made by uh, government subcontractors. But I try to get as many uh, subcontractor parts in here so for relevant size, because this ain't easy. <laughs> uh, I made my drum. This accepts uh, 3 32nd, uh control cable but this comes out and that falls and you got your your idler mount and your drum I still need to put an additional hole in there for the taper pin that retains this to the, uh, the torque tube so on your sides, we'll do this one first. He just pops right out of there. That is your uh, your forward mount to your TBS, and you got two different sizes of pipe there, which the torque tubes go into. This one's bigger because those go inside these big ones, and then the torque tube goes inside of those on either side. So that was a fun little mystery to figure out. This guy. Sort of these are going to be riveted to the, uh, the console. These are uh, made out of 316 cents steel. I wish I could make them out of magnesium or aluminum, but you can wish in one hand. And you know what in the other, see what one figures, yeah, fills up first. On to the indicators. These are going to be fun. How do I know that? Because they've already been fun. The good news is, is my number 25 chain I know from the uh, IPB that they are made out of 67 links. But if you know anything about this type of chain, an odd number is impossible. So I figure they have 67 links and then like the, the 68th is like the, the link or the special link. So I did that. And if I'm off, it's gonna be, the whole mechanism is gonna be off like a quarter of an inch. So uh, call the cops, but these, th this is, this is so interesting. These, there's actually a hole. The top of the chain goes through that hole and the bottom of the chain goes under the beam that has the hole in it for the top chain. There's gonna be a sprocket on these. These are actually backwards, just I've got them mounted in here for experimentation purposes, but that's where they need to be. And up on here, you're gonna have your readouts. But what happens is, is when you turn these big wheels, there's a sprocket right there that's gonna run up to these and turn your your little things here so you can see. Once again, I don't know what information's on there other than like up, down, and a few numbers and, and lines, but that's what they're gonna do. These things are complicated. I theorize, because once again, my pictures are incredibly grainy. Uh, one of my pictures was taken in 1994. <laughs> um, these are actually backwards. Um, so you would have your flat side on this side, and then that side is going to attach to an arm here, and then there's spacers, and then the chain's gonna be on the sprocket on the outside. 
but on this side, I, there's like a Bakelite. So you've got, they clamp together. It's really weird. It's like this side's got the steel and on this side's got the Bakelite. And I think that there's four rollers because there's four rivets in there. And, that's, and these are riveted to this. So this side's gonna be stationary with Bakelite and rollers. And this side is going to roll with a central shaft. But there's a picture of a gear on the wrong side uh, there's a sprocket on one side and the gear on the other side. I don't know why the gear is there. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a B36 at my disposal or a real one. And uh, I'm not an aeronautical engineer or a structural engineer. And I don't know for the life of me why Convair had to put, looks like a, a redundant gear. I would think the sprocket and the chain would, would do enough. But there's all kinds of bushings and all kinds of crap in there that I'm going to have to figure out. So I've covered the switches, I've covered the, the indicators, the chains, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, the mounts, yippee. I'd say that's about it. Uh, last little word is um, I've had a lot of money over the summer. <clears throat> I got some good sales with some of my collectibles that I sold uh, earlier this year. I'm running out of that money, so I'm going to have to hit the eBay again and start doing some antique picking and sourcing and all that good stuff. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to work on this thing 16 hours a day like I have all summer. And I have done just that. I've, these, these past uh, week that I haven't worked on, it's the longest I haven't worked on it since ever. So uh, that's probably not gonna impact very much because I'm doing just so much detailing. After this, I'm gonna do the, uh, the control columns. Get those yokes up there. I'll see y'all next time.